Welcome to Soul Antique. I'm Jordi, and today, we'll be crafting an infinite weave pattern for bracelets, earrings, or pendants. The difference between this tutorial from our previous ones is that, rather than concealing the knot with the third wire, we'll be filing it down and then discreetly tucking it away amidst the loops of the first wire. As you can see, I use a bigger part of the round nose pliers when crafting the first and last loops of the coil. These two larger loops will help us later with concealing the knot of the second wire effectively. As not everyone may have access to grooved stones, I've chosen to demonstrate this technique using a gemstone. If you've watched my previous tutorials, you may choose to skip ahead to when I complete this coil. You can find that part around the beginning of the fifth minute in this video. As in my previous tutorials, I'm using 22 gauge brass wire for the sun weave pattern. Additionally, for securing the gemstone, I'll be using approximately two inches of 26 gauge wire, which is perfect for this purpose. To achieve the desired wire shape, it's crucial to maintain tension by pulling the wire with the pliers using our thumb. I firmly hold the wire with my left thumb while simultaneously pulling it with the pliers during each wrist movement. My aim is to create half or slightly less than half of a loop with each motion. This technique not only helps in shaping the wire but also prevents potential strain on our wrists. If you find this information valuable, I encourage you to share this video with your friends. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well, as that greatly assists in optimizing the video's visibility in the algorithm, benefiting both this video and future ones. I made an error due to overconfidence. I originally intended to create 10 mountains, and I did just that. However, as you may recall, we intended for the final loop to be larger. Consequently, I had to backtrack, undo the last loop, and rework it using a larger section of the pliers. Now, it's time to cut the first wire. Cutting wire with round nose pliers is a handy skill in traditional wire wrapping. Although it might seem tricky at first, you'll get the hang of it. Here's how, hold a piece of wire with your thumb, leaving about one or two centimeters, roughly half an inch, between the pliers and your thumb. Apply some pressure to the pliers as if they were actual cutting pliers, and start moving the wire up and down steadily. Make sure you maintain a good grip to avoid slipping. With practice, you'll become proficient at cutting wire this way. If you encounter any difficulties, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll do my best to explain or even make a dedicated video on this topic. Now, let's see this technique in action with our coil. 
Hold the wire firmly, then perform the up and down cutting motion. And there you have it. First, we'll pass the second wire through the first loop of the initial wire. Then, we'll bend the second wire and cross it two or three times. Afterward, I'll use flat pliers without teeth to twist the second wire a bit more. Next, we'll trim the knot as near to the base as possible while ensuring there's still enough of it to hold the wire together. Then, we'll need to use a small jeweler's file to file down the remaining wire until it's small enough to fit between the loops of the first wire. Filing can be a bit repetitive, but a helpful tip is to file in one direction consistently and avoid filing on the backward stroke. To set the gemstone in place, we'll employ a small piece of 26 gauge wire. First, thread it through the hole in the gemstone, then bend both sides so they can pass through the central hole of our piece. Open the two ends of the wire to secure the gemstone in the center. Next, we'll tie one end of the wire using flat nose pliers, and once that side is secure, we'll do the same with the other end. To secure the tie, pass the wire through one mountain, then, once on the other side, thread it through the central hole beneath the gemstone and pull it tight. Trim the excess wire and create small spirals at each end to prevent any poking. You can leave these spirals as they are, or if you prefer, you can hide them inside the coil. If you require further clarification on creating a spiral, please refer to the first tutorial in the series. You can find the link in the upper right corner of the screen.
I'd like to express my gratitude to all of you for joining me this far in the video. A special shout out to my amazing patrons who continue to support this channel. If you'd like to support this channel, consider becoming a part of the Soul Antique Patreon community, you can find the link in the description. You can also treat yourself by exploring my collection of jewelry on my online site at www.soulandticx.com, the link is also in the description. Thank you for being a part of this journey.